You guys are always asking about wallets and today is no different. Today we're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive on a project and one that I think you've probably seen us report on a little bit before and that is Coinbase Wallet. We'll dive in deep with the project lead there. It's gonna be a fun one. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Joining me today is Chintan Tokaria, who is the Senior Director of Engineering over at Coinbase. So great to have you, Chintan. Thanks so much, Paul. Really, really happy to be here and talk about wallets. One of my favorite yes. subjects. Well, you know, right now it's a big topic, obviously, with everything from self-custody, but the growing interest around how you can hold your own tokens. And of course, wallets have been a big part of that. Talk to me a little bit about where Coinbase is. We've had you guys on before here on the show. And it's probably been about seven or eight months, maybe even a year since our last interview. So, and you, I know you guys have come a long way. Where are you, some of the big things that have happened in that period of time? Yeah, you know, We've been heads down shipping. The team's just been really focused um, on making the best, most simplest and reliable Web3 wallet. And really our goal here is to like to bring users on chain, to bring users into the crypto economy in like a really simple way. Um, and at the end of the day, like what we've been focusing on is if we think about sort of the primitives here, it's really at the end goal is to create real utility, real use cases for crypto. And on Wallet, we've been really heads down on shipping power user features, simplifying onboarding, safety, and discovery. So we may, we're probably like the only wallet out there with such a rich set of features, and we're really proud of that. We're really excited to have launched multi-wallet support where you can import multiple mnemonics and multiple addresses uh, into your wallet and see them all in one place, all really clearly laid out, really nicely identified with labels, We've also like started pushing out things like a Web3 starter kit, how to bring someone on chain. Everyone asks like, hey, I heard you are building a wallet. What should I do with it? And we want to make that experience really simple. So what are the first few things they should do? Establish an identity. So we offer mm -hmm. uh, free L2 usernames, right? And so everyone yep. can establish their decentralized identity. And then we've been also making sends really simple. So really excited to have launched in the last six months this notion of gasless sends or sponsored sends. Um, so Paul, you know, like if, if you're trying to do some basic things in crypto, like just move some USDC from your wallet mm -hmm. to someone else's, many times you need like multiple tokens, right? You need the USDC, but also the native gas token like Ethereum. Well, we've taken care of that. Like we just take care of that behind the scenes for users. So they don't need to think about having multiple tokens and the send is actually just free. So anyone today can just send USDC from one person to another not right. worry about these native tokens. And it's it's just really, really simple. Um, so we've just been proud to focus on those areas and along with safety and discovery too. I want to talk to yeah. you about OnChain Summer because this was a, a huge success mm. for Coinbase. You guys were able to really accelerate a lot of growth here. I was just looking at some of the Dune analytics, you know, and the amount of growth that you guys saw in OnChain Summer. Yeah. When you look at that, the, I mean, I know Brian and I know some of the team there would this be considered, um, this is a pretty easy question, do you think this was a huge <laughs> success, but in a success ratio of say one to 10, how big was this for you guys? I mean, I think the data speaks for itself, right? And this is a resounding success for, for Coinbase, for Base, which is the new L2 protocol we just recently right. launched. And also I think for the whole crypto community. And, and so for if you're not familiar with OnChain Summer, um, for the audience, what, it, what was it? We launched this 30 day um, campaign, this 30 day sort of like fun web three on chain mm -hmm. program that was available to anyone out there. And what happened every single day was it was an opportunity to participate on chain with a daily drop. It could be from an NFT artist. We had a drop from DK, who's like just this amazing artist. Uh, we also had big brands like Coca-Cola and Atari participate as well with a daily drop. So it was a really cool way to, to push ourselves here at Coinbase on just making our products better, right? And, and we felt that throughout all of on-chain summer, which every day the team was working really hard. These, were, um, these drops were all on base and we could see users trying to onboard by funding their wallets, um, interacting and, and minting the NFT, and then taking part of uh, with, what that creator community wanted, which is like, what do you do now once you have that NFT? NFT? So parallel is, is this uh, web three game mm -hmm. on base uh, mm -hmm. they we could mint their cards and then people then started playing the parallel game and it was great because it was like this amazing distribution power that we have at coinbase and bringing users 
on-chain through this on-chain summer program. And then people are like engaging in the crypto and on-chain economy. How important is the next move for Coinbase to really draw in you know, other major brands? And are you getting interest from other major brands to do some more activities like these? Yeah, absolutely. We are. We are. And it's exciting that major brands are seeing that there is a new audience they can reach and they can reach this audience in a, in a different way, in a, in a way that rewards both innovation and what Coke did here is really cool. Like I'm just watching this and it was just new, new, beautiful art that in this case is also like just 3d interactive. Right. And so we're seeing brands come in and brands are really excited about a few things and we're excited to work with them. One, what they're excited about is the audience Two, It's sort of like the left pocket, right pocket, right? So left pocket is like my fiat or my credit cards or my, you know, sure. traditional trad five bank accounts. My right pocket is my crypto assets. Interesting. And of course, you know, they're excited about that, but they're excited about the community that they can create with this and the loyalty and engagement they, they can create using on-chain technology. So, for example, if I uh, mint the Coca-Cola NFTs here, Coke can also start thinking about, or another brand can also start thinking about, like, what is this long-term engagement? Mm -hmm. As more people mint these NFTs, do I want to reward them in the future? How does this play out? It actually opens, like, a real sort of Pandora's box in a, in a good way of different uh, loyalty programs uh, right. and different ways to bring in the community. What about something like an on-chain winter? What, what, what's going to be the next step for, for Coinbase and Base? Yeah. So, you know, what, what we're thinking um, as, a, as a group here and how to continue to engage the Web3 community and also uh, find ways to keep providing on-chain uh, activities, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing we're doing is just like this idea of just daily drops, right? So one example, Unlonely. Unlonely is, uh, it's an on-chain dating uh, TV program where two folks are, you know, you can watch them like a reality show and you can see how that date's going on. Uh, but then you can also like, you know, there's a little chat view. You can chat about how this date's going. You can also bet on maybe the outcome. Like, you know, do, will, will they end up in a real date or will one person say, no, you know, this is not for me. Um, so it's a, it's a really interesting sort of way to sort of marry and bring together stuff that people find interesting mm. and also to put it on chain. I think uh, Base Paint is another really interesting example. I really okay. enjoyed it, that launch during on chain summer. Ev uh, you can participate by buying a brush and then pixel artists will come together every day. And this is happening in real time. They'll draw for 24 hours this art and it will be based on the theme. And then once the 24 hour window hits, boom, anyone can then mint that piece of art. And the great, the coolest thing here is many artists came together and contributed. And as users are minting that art, the royalties are paid back to the artists that contributed. On L2 Beat, which is showing kind of the Arbitrum, there's op uh, optimism and then base number three right now. So- yeah. With that being the case, I mean, you're not far behind possibly f flipping optimism. So, and this is just beginning, or at least it feels that way in the sense of what we've seen so far. What are, what are the bigger, grander picture, uh, I guess, for Coinbase in general with what you guys are doing that kind of integrates all of this together? Continuing to find and highlight uh, beyond financial use cases for crypto, but utility-driven use cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also a bigger part of Coinbase's responsibility is how to bring users uh, that are not into crypto, that haven't quite onboarded yet, how to bring them into the crypto economy in a much easier, simpler, and more meaningful way that goes beyond just financial use cases. Uh, like buying a coffee, for example, um, how to make it just sort of really simple, like, hey, I could buy this coffee with crypto. Boom. Great. Awesome. Chinten, do you think that, I mean, when you look at, at what's happening in blockchain in general, we'll see a handful of projects that really take off. And then some that, you know, think you, we think they're going to take off and then they kind of, you know, fizzle out. Uh, you look at SocialFi, this is a good example. I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned FriendTech, but obviously SocialFi's growth is, is really kind of starting to compound here. And do you think social 
potentially is one of those use cases that could be massive in terms of growth and big opportunity in the few years? Or is there another aspect around utility that you you think might emerge? So when we think about social, what's interesting about it? One, you can engage and interact with anyone that is on chain. It's, it's permissionless, it's borderless. It will work with anyone in, in the world. And that's, that's really interesting. But then what are the other properties? Um, well, if people have established their identity, you can actually learn about someone's on-chain identity, what their likes, dislikes are, and engage. Farcaster has done something really excellent. It's, it's mm-hmm. a, a social app that allows users to chat with each other, right? And, and chat's amazing. But beyond that, the formation of groups with similar identities, right? And, mm-hmm. and likes and, and preferences. Um, but all this data is on chain. And because this data for social is on chain, folks can build um, value add on top of that. If I want to message right. you, Paul, I could, you know, yeah. message you. Hopefully, hopefully you have paulbaron.eth, but I can message you there and say, hey, Paul, how's it going? Thanks mm-hmm. for, you know, it was great catching up for dinner and boom, I can send you, you know, the, the 20 bucks I owe you for dinner. Uh, what, whatever it might be. And even then we should think of that as like a really simple social use case where you can connect one person to another tap to pay, you know, with my phone, Google pay, Apple pay, or my credit card. It's really simple. So how do we like make this exponentially better? Right. Um, <clears throat> and so if I go into a coffee shop or a restaurant, like what Blackbird is doing, it's really cool. I can go into a restaurant, I can check into the restaurant and, um, that restaurant can say, Hey, welcome back, Chintan. Mm-hmm. This is your 10th visit here. Here, here's a reward. Here's like a free drink on us. I've dined at the restaurant. How do I make the payment really simple? Right. Right. How do I make the payment, you know, flexible either for my left pocket or right pocket as that analogy, um, where I can just scan or tap and I can select USDC as an example. And mm-hmm. the payment just lands instantly. It's settled. It's gasless. And it's using crypto behind the scenes. Do, do wallets become a type of crypto super app or an on-chain super app, mm-hmm. right? Where someone is holding their crypto assets. That's great. But then what do you do with it, right? And that's right. really the, the core of, I think, everything we're trying to do in this industry to grow adoption. What next? What's interesting? What's compelling? Payments and messaging, you know, merchants are loving it. We, we actually... In the summer, we went to uh, um, Paris. Uh, it was for the ETHCC conference. And we worked with the local cafe, Cafe Saint Victor, a really old established cafe. And we took over the cafe for a few days during the conference and ran the entire cafe using Coinbase Wallet. And what was really cool to see here was the throughput, the number of orders that were coming through to the cafe with just something so simple as Coinbase wallet messaging and payments, we had basically doubled it because the, the, the volume just went, went much higher because the payments were faster and getting the orders from the customer to the cafe was just done through messaging. And it was super simple. Well, let me kind of interrupt there. I mean, that was kind of a captive yeah. audience, obviously with ECC there in Paris. So there would be a lot of people that would do that. But you look at this out in the wild because this is something I get when I talk to a lot of retail you know, industry is the complexity of them getting started on it, or at least they feel there's a complexity. What is Coinbase trying to do or doing to kind of overcome that? Because that's a hurdle I feel like really is in front of us right now. Step one is just getting a wallet, right? Even at that point, you know, that's complicated. That's complicated for someone who's new into this space. What, what is the concept of keys? What is what is backing up the keys? Oh, you're you're saying that if I lose these keys, I lose everything? That's really, right. really frightening. And then the second step after the keys is how to fund the wallet and on-ramp. And then the mm-hmm. third step is, wait a minute, I have to like sign transactions to use crypto? Um, th- this seems a, a bit foreign to me. This, oh, you know what? Forget it, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I'll try to quickly break down, like, how are we thinking about these three basic things? On the onboarding, as an industry and even what we're doing in Coinbase Wallet, we've simplified the onboarding drastically, where it's just one button push, you're onboarded. And we are looking at technologies like MPC, multi-party computation, and just think of it this way, where um, your key material is split amongst different parties, right? Trusted parties, Coinbase could be a trusted party. 
Uh, So if you do lose your keys, for example, you can have them recovered across these trusted parties. That does make the onboarding much easier. And we can move into a world in the future of account abstracted wallets where Mm -hmm. it's actually, you know, a smart contract powering the wallet. So then it feels like you're logging into email, but there's a wallet behind the scenes. And that I think, you know, we're, we're exploring that space and there's a lot of interesting tech being developed there. Onboarding. Onboarding should be just one click. Like I, I think of when I buy things on Amazon, I put in the cart, boom, one click, it's done. And that's how right. easy onboarding needs to be. So what we're doing in Wallet is basically making that whole experience down to one button push once you've gone through the KYC process. And then the last piece around merchants already have their established point of sale systems. Why would right. they want to bring in another one? Right? Why would they want to just go through that hassle? Fees. And I think what's important to <laughs> yeah, oh, fees, right? So fees. why should a merchant care? Fees, yes. Uh, chargebacks don't become a thing anymore. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, and that's a big, big portion of like merchant fraud and or sort of customer fraud towards merchants. We can't go into a merchant and say, hey, come accept crypto. That's already like a little scary. Like I've heard only yeah. interesting things about crypto. Like I'm, I'm okay with my current setup. We have to tell them you'll save fees, credit card fees. You could even earn yield on that USDC, like 5% yield, for example. And that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can even set up loyalty programs. So now that, you know, if I went to a coffee shop and paid, that merchant knows how to reach me. They can message me. They could airdrop an NFT into my wallet saying, hey, come back again for a free cup of coffee. Right. There's really amazing loyalty plays that can happen. And it's all in the control of the merchant. And our goal here is to make that starter kit for a merchant really simple and easy where it's just a few button clicks and they're like oh yeah this is cool um and this is more about the the issue with these wall gardens because i can i concern myself now with what's happening over at apple we saw metamask being taken down off the app store for a a short period of time everybody was freaking out everybody i knew you know had an apple device and a metamask account or immediately i'm just you know put it on hopefully you can get to an android if you if it was worst case or sideload it, you know, in some scenarios. But my point is, is this is a problem within the industry, Apple and its relationship with the app makers. So are you guys worried about this? And if you are, what's what's a, a strategy? In this example, you gave MetaMask, when they're gatekeeping, it creates a real challenge, right? Where if someone has stored their crypto assets in, in an app like MetaMask or Coinbase Wallet, mm-hmm and it's no longer available for updates on the app store, let alone even a u- new user coming in, that's, that's really scary, right? Yeah. And I think what we need to do is really both along the education piece and build those good relationships, but also just continue to highlight why this technology, why going on chain, why blockchain technology is allowing for true uh, access and freedom to use the apps you want, the technologies you want and move value uh, b- between users. There's also, you know, other good initiatives out there. Uh, for example, you know, folks are building uh, crypto OSs, like one for Solana, one for Ethereum, right. where it would be on their own hardware, right? And and that's actually a really compelling future. If you are, for example, going back to merchants, if you're a shop owner, you know, in in a small rural, you know, town, um, you should be able to set up shop by just downloading an app and creating a wallet. Right. Right. And once you have that zero X address, you can receive funds. You could even message your customers. They can message you. That that is the the beauty. What we're trying to build and create in in this fully permissionless world. You mentioned USDC and the potential of earning yield. What is the likelihood of us seeing USDC? I, I look at this right here in terms of what's happened on on just L two beat. Again, this of course was what you guys are doing in terms of uh, multi-chain around USDC and this idea of earning yield. Do you feel like this is going to be something that's going to be available in the wallet soon to where I could earn yield there versus just my Coinbase account? Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. A yes. So, okay. t- so today, <laughs> so, t- so today in, in our in main Coinbase account, you can obviously uh, right. earn yield, 5% yield on USDC. Uh-huh. Exactly. And, of course, like we're looking at ways to make that also available in Coinbase Wallet. Um, wow. and, and that's okay. an important piece of just participating sure. in this, uh, this uh, ecosystem. 
What about just the interactivity with banks? Because obviously most people are going to say at some point I got to move money out of a wallet, whether it's an online or a hardware wallet, into my bank. You've got Beam, of course, who has already started to make this work. The potential of going from a Coinbase wallet via Beam directly into my bank account, just smooth interaction like that. Is that also in the roadmap? Where are you guys going? Yes, so what you're describing is a, is a cash out, right? Sure. That's an important use case that we, we definitely have to get right in our building for and to make that super, super easy. Even today, inside Coinbase Wallet, you can very easily send funds from your wallet to your retail account uh, and then cash out. But that's like a multi-step process, right? And so we are looking at ways to make that easier and simpler. Also looking at uh, Phantom, their NFT shortcuts, um, which is something, again, as we see more NFT usage, within wallets, especially, I know we have a lot of our own team that, you know, we utilize a lot of NFT collection and, you know, obviously Solana and Phantom have been kind of the, the choice here. What does that look like for Coinbase in terms of the wallet being able to integrate like that? We built out really interesting things as well, like iOS widgets, where you can put your NFTs um, or your friend's NFTs onto your, your home screen on, on Apple. Um, and of course, in the future, we're looking at ways to just make uh, interaction with those NFTs easier. Like today, for example, inside Coinbase Wallet, if someone actually bids on one of your NFTs, uh, let's say you have a, a Ute, like you were showing in this video, mm-hmm. and, yep. and I want to bid on, on your Ute, you'll get a push notification saying, hey, Jintan wants to bid on your Ute. This is the offer. You can tap it and actually accept that offer right then okay. and there in the wallet. Right. So we're really pushing for more use cases, both from a commerce perspective, as well as making sort of the, the, the long-term sort of benefits of NFTs clear. Like folks have been looking at token gating for NFTs, mm-hmm. applying discounts if you hold certain NFTs. All right. of that does work naturally inside of our wallet. With that being the case, because UX is going to be a part of that, let's talk about what that might look like for you guys, 3D and AR. Let's talk about is that something that's coming down the pipe for Coinbase Wallet? We've seen this in some wallets already. How about uh, Coinbase Wallet? Um, if it's specific to like NFTs, right? Um, Coinbase Wallet can support rendering of, of all these NFTs, right? And especially if they're in 3D, either in our DAP browser. Um, and I think it's really cool and awesome to th- see, like we kind of, we're looking at the right. creators out there that are painting this future, right? And we're seeing more stuff come into the 3D space, more stuff come mm-hmm. into AR space. I think just recently I noticed um, a team building sort of like a Pokemon Go on-chain type of game that works right inside of our Coinbase Wallet DAP browser. So you actually don't even need to leave leave the wallet because really what we're designed here, what we've designed here is a way where if you want to play an on-chain game, you can through the DAP browser. And if you want to view, you know, 3D NFTs inside the native experience, you can, right? But I think there's a there's a new world where if I'm using like hardware or at a physical experience somewhere else, maybe it's an art gallery, right? How might that art gallery tap into the assets I'm holding, the NFTs, for example, in my wallet and mm-hmm. tailor for me a really unique experience? If I have a Finney NFT, for example, or a Utes NFT, how might that art gallery, if I'm walking through the art exhibit, show me things that might actually be relevant towards the art I've curated in my own wallet. And so it's almost like this personalized experience inside of an art gallery. That's kind of like this bold new future that I'm pretty excited about too. I've been surprised at how much has been accomplished with some of these projects out here. So very impressed with the, uh, the movement forward. Uh, Last up here, I just want to kind of talk a little bit about uh, the potential for uh, Coinbase wallet for retail businesses. So and then you step back and say, okay, what is Brian Armstrong, your CEO, thinking about when you look at all these advantages that are starting to prop up in the wallet sector versus traditional, whether it's base or what Coinbase as an exchange is doing? How does he see this? I mean, I'm sure, I don't know if you can give us that answer, but how does he see this? Because I would think I'm leaning a little bit here toward wallet because of all these monster you know, markets that are developing for it. Uh, Coinbase, the exchange, it's where folks start their crypto journey, right? They onboard, they move fiat from their bank into the exchange, 
they buy some crypto. But then what's next? Well, how do we bring them on chain? And, and we can do that through wallet, right? And we've been really clear, I think, outwardly, Brian and, and the company, we want payments to be fast. We've been able to get end-to-end payments on wallet down on Arbitrum, for example, mm-hmm. 0.57 seconds, end-to-end. That could be for me to anyone in the world, instant settlement, where I send yep. to you, Paul, and your balance updates in 0.5 seconds from when I sent it. That's, that's incredible. Gonna critical. Yeah, it's going to be critical. That's, like, that's just like a, wow, boom, done, easy. Instant settlement, you own it. And then the other thing is cost, right? No one wants to pay 30 cents of gas on a $5 um, payment, right? And so we, we're pushing on sponsoring the gas, like I mentioned earlier, but also just driving the cost, the, the network fee cost down by increasing the adoption of L2s. Base is great. That's why we're all behind it because as base adoption grows, more and more transactions will happen on L2s and base is a low cost network and we're going to continue yeah. to, to drive the cost down here. Yeah, I think the the light bulb moment for most retailers when I talk to them and you know I do a lot of these seminars and sessions and most of them are business owners and the minute they start to realize, oh, wait a minute, there's a solution here to kind of uh, subvert my merchant services product because they're already paying those you know limited fees uh, or essentially general fees plus the transactional fees that are already kind of tied in. Right. If you have a retail, you know, that's say under twenty five bucks, those fees can really start to uh, penetrate your profitability. So it's a big issue uh, going forward. Yeah, hey, listen, absolutely. It's, it's definitely good catching up with you guys on what you're doing. We're watching uh, Coinbase Wallet along with some others out there that are really making some advancements, I think, in the retail sector, which I think payments are going to be one of the biggest things. So uh, Chinton, thank you so much for stopping in today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Paul. It was a pleasure. Looking forward to catching up again. You bet. All right. So you guys are maybe tuned in over on the podcast side of things. Jump over here to the YouTube channel. You get a chance to see all these examples that you know Chinton and I were just talking about. If you're in business or maybe you're trying to figure out strategies around your own, you know, what you're doing as an entrepreneur, there's a lot of opportunities here that kind of circle around what's happening in crypto for sure. All you have to do is jump over to the YouTube channel and find us. It's pretty easy. If you're not in the diamond circle, make sure and get in. It's super simple. Click the link down below for free access there. It's additional content, all sorts of goodies that we do over there. And if you want to reach me, catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath. 